The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 4 that in Christ was life and that life was the light of men. Jesus told us where to be to be the light of the world. What does that mean? In the Old Covenant, here we read of the light as the life of Jesus. It's very clear. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. So that's why he said, I am the light of the world. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. But he also said in John chapter 9 and verse 5 that I am the light of the world only as long as I am in the world. Once I leave the world, I mean it's very clear, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. We know that he's not in the world now. He said in John 17, Father, I'm coming to you. I'm no longer in the world. Then he gave that responsibility to us. <clears throat> He said in Matthew 5.16, <clears throat> sorry, Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. He looked at his disciples and said, you're the light of the world. So if somebody were to ask you, <clears throat> who is the light of the world today? Say, we. We as a church. You say, not Jesus. No, Jesus said he was the light of the world as long as he was in the world. We, I believe his word in John 9 verse 5. And then he turned around to us and said, you're the light of the world. Now that's an awesome responsibility. And that's why we don't like to say it. We don't like to say we're the light of the world because we look at the way we're living. <clears throat> and some of us may be pretty ashamed of the way we live and say, how can I say we're the light of the world? That's what should bring us down on our faces and say, why are we living like that? Why are we living in a world, why are we living in a way that we're not the light of the world? Something's seriously wrong. Okay, if you're newly born again, for a couple of years, that's okay. It's like little children take about two years to get steady on their feet. And we read in the Old Testament that when God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, it took two years for, for them to come to the borders of Canaan. And you read that in Deuteronomy 2.14, that after two years they came to the borders of Canaan and God told them to go in and they didn't go in. So they wandered for another 38 years. So what I see from that is, Canaan is a life of victory and triumph, picture of it, and God expected them to come to that in two years. So I see that as God's plan. That if you're born again, if you're really sincerely born again, in two years you should come to a life of victory. If you haven't, I think part of the reason is there's not been a proper repentance. That means uh, we, we are born facing sin with God on our back. Repentance means a 180 degree turn where God is in front of us and sin and the world are behind us. Now, with many, many Christians, that is not true. Sin and the world are not behind them. And that's because they heard an improper gospel. A gospel that emphasized faith, believe, believe, just confess your sin and believe. And did not emphasize the most important thing, repentance. So, without repenting or repenting 90 degrees instead of 180 degrees with one eye on the world, one eye on God, they try to believe and confess their sin. And they imagine, I'm okay, you're not okay. The message that John the Baptist brought as a forerunner to Christ is the message that is the forerunner of the gospel. The gospel is salvation through Christ, but there's a message that prepares the way for the gospel. That's the message of John the Baptist. Bap uh, repentance. That is a turning around. So just like God sent John the Baptist and he said, I've come here to raise the valleys and bring down the mountains and make the crooked places straight and to remove the rough places and make them smooth. These are 
four different pictures he used about repentance, bringing down all the high thoughts and lifting up all the depressed valleys and making the crooked things in our life straight and making the rough places smooth. You read that in Luke chapter 3. He was preaching repentance and that was the preparation for faith. Paul said in Acts 20, I preach repentance and faith everywhere I go. So that is the reason why, and if that's been true in your case, you can see perhaps that is the main reason why people have not grown spiritually or not come into a life of victory in two years or can be here for five years and still be defeated, even though you've heard and heard and heard and heard. And still you're yelling at each other at home and still lusting and pursuing after money and things like that. And you get, you got all the right theory. But the light, which is the life of Jesus, is not shining. And that's okay. But the sad thing is, it's not bringing us down on our faces in weeping and saying, Lord, why isn't that happening? I've been here so long. And why isn't that happening in our life? We're not disturbed by it. That's a serious thing. I've often told people that the fact that you sin is not as serious as the fact that you don't weep after you sin. That's more serious. That shows a lack of sensitivity. It's like, you know, when we get a little injury on our hand, we immediately react to it and want to do something about it. If you get a cut, you don't just leave it. But if you had leprosy, you wouldn't even feel that because le lepers don't have sensation. So when I sin and it doesn't make me weep, it's an indication of our conscience having lost its sensitivity. It's a serious condition. It's spiritual leprosy. I know a lot of people who have come to our church in Bangalore and who have said to me after a few years there, Brother Zach, I don't really believe I was saved till I came here. I said, why? He said, I thought I was born again in the other church I attended. But I was so defeated by sin and I realized that I never knew what repentance was till I came here. I never got a clear understanding of what sin was until I came here. So until you understand what sin is, how can you repent from it? If you, know where, if you know where south is, then you can turn around from south and face north. But if you don't know where the south is, then how do you turn around and face north? So if you don't know what sin is, you can't repent. So you don't know what darkness is, you don't know what the light is. And that, I believe, is where the devil has blinded so many people concerning what is darkness. The darkness in our life is basically due to our self-centeredness that our life is centered around myself. We grow up like that, the entire world lives a self-centered life. Whether they are politicians or businessmen or academics or megachurch pastors, very often it's self projecting themselves. And if my life is self-centered, I'm really following the way that Adam went. Even if I've added a little religion to it, because, you know, the way Jesus is being preached by many preachers today is He will bless you. Well, who in the world doesn't want to be blessed? There's not a single human being in the world who doesn't want to be blessed. Come and Jesus will bless you and He'll forgive all your sins. He will take you to heaven and uh, He will even bless you materially. And He'll make you healthy. Well, every human being in the world wants to be healthy. Every human being in the world wants to be wealthy. Every human being in the world wants to be blessed. And every human being in the world wants to go to heaven. So the entire world should respond to such a gospel. And most people do. But Jesus said the way to life is narrow and very few find it. So that must be another gospel altogether. And that's the deception that's going on in Christendom today. <laughs>